Hey, how's it going, YouTubers? So, all right, we got here the Bees 4x5 Reel. And now I've been using this one for years now to develop all my 4x5 film. I absolutely love it. About 95% of my work was done with it. Everything you're seeing here was processed using this reel. And so in this video, I just wanna go over some tips on best practices when using the reel and kind of showcase a little bit how you can get the most out of this reel. It's the most foolproof method that I've found. So yeah, let's dive right on in. All right, first thing, let's discuss loading the sheets. You'll find the indicator notch and find one of the open notches on the reel. I'll place my thumb there and with my pointer finger, I will help to guide the sheet in as you see here. And I'll just go around and do all six sheets using that same method. Find your indicator notch, find the corner there, get the film in, curl it, and I'll use my pointer finger to help guide it in and it's pretty straightforward. The one thing that can kind of go wrong here, or I guess there's two things that could really go wrong. You could load it the wrong direction if you're not paying attention to the indicator notch on your film, and you can also double load one of these slots in here. So when you're done loading the tank, it's good to place your thumb at one of the notches and just go around and make sure that all of them are loaded and there's not one empty one. Uh, if you've got one empty one, then that might indicate that you double loaded one of them. So it's really, really good to go around and check. I'll keep my thumb in one slot so that I know that that's one and I go one, two, three, four, five. And then I know I've loaded all six properly. All right, now let's take a look at how I develop using this reel and kind of the best methods I've found for using it. So an important thing is to make sure that you do a pre-wash of your film. As always, seal the edges here, peel up on one end, and burp the tank. That'll create a vacuum seal so that when you turn it upside down, it doesn't leak. So when you do these agitations, they're fairly aggressive, and I'll do one full minute of these to remove the anti-halation layer, and I tend to do another 30 second set of inversions like this, just to make sure that the anti-halation layer is completely removed. These are very aggressive agitations. And as I'm doing this, just to show you in slow motion, I'm also rotating the tank around. So, just to over accentuate it there, you can see I'm spinning it as I'm inverting it. So I'm going to fill the tank a second time here just to make sure that we remove the anti halation layer completely. Get your lid on tight, burp it to create your vacuum seal, and then begin your inversions. I'll do 15 slap the tank to dislodge bubbles and then I start my timer and I'll do four inversions every minute so when I hit the 10 minute mark since I've got an 11 minute development cycle here I'll go ahead and do another inversion okay time for another inversion I'll do four two three four set it down slap it Dislodge any bubbles and let it cook again for another minute. And I'll do that every minute and then when it's done, I do stop bath and fixer. Same thing for each of them. I do an initial 15 inversions and then start my timer just to get the film completely saturated with the chemistry. So in regards to washing your film, you can go ahead and just wash it like you would wash any of your regular film. I tend to wash just slightly warmer than my temperature of my chemicals that I process with. This just helps make sure that all your fixer is removed. And again, just use whatever washing methods that you normally use. The Ilford washing method is a great one to go with. Then when I remove the reel, I will have all my film ready to go, and because I do such aggressive inversions, they tend to be sticking up a little bit, I'll use my clip and go ahead and pull them out. 
And yeah, it's pretty simple. I love this reel. Uh, you can see some example shots here. I've developed 99% of my work using this reel and have had no issues. The one thing that people do seem to complain about is the anti-halation layer not being removed. And I think that's just as a result of not doing the two pre-washes. And you know, even if you are doing two pre-washes, it's really, really crucial that you are agitating fairly aggressively to make sure that you remove that anti-halation layer. If you are left with a little bit of the anti-halation layer, uh, you know, after your processing, you can always run some extra developer over the film. If you've properly fixed, this won't cause any issues. And this will just help to clear that anti-halation layer that was left over. Yep, so... Thanks for tuning in. Uh, subscribe if you like my content. I should have some more videos coming out soon. And as always, think more, shoot less.